so that that does nicely bring us to to the last thing I wanted to make sure that that we hit. You know, because this is, of course, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously, as we say today, you have views about all sorts of things, but you're, uh, you know, you're, conceived you're, ones, but I have them, yes. Uh, but your your baby is is this uh, uh, non naturalist uh, intuitionist uh, moral realism. So uh, so just to. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just for the benefit of, uh, of of the peanut gallery, you want to take a minute, spell it out what that means. Yeah, and like, uh, so, so here's what I'll say. Um, I, the way I was influenced by Nagel on free will, I was really, really strongly influenced by Russ Schaefer Landau's book Moral mm-hmm. Realism: A Defense, um, where I think he makes a very strong case for why we should understand moral claims as being belief independent, which means that not that they are independent of the nature of consciousness. I think some moral claims are about the nature of phenomenal states and sentient beings and such like that. Uh, But that like in the sense of if all of us got together and agreed that torturing puppies was moral, our agreement, our belief, our thoroughgoing judgment would all matter not a whit to the morality of that actual action. The features that cause that thing to be immoral are features of the universe that are there, whether or not we properly cognize them, right? And then you get, you know, you get the question, well, what kind of features are they, smart guy, right? And I ultimately have to say, they're not features like the kind of features that science appears to measure, right? I don't think that we can build a particle accelerator that will tell us moral claims are true or false or allow us to measure what is the right answer to a particular moral judgment or something like that. So that's where I end up having to say they're non-natural. By non-natural, I just mean, and this is a really terrible definition, but I, I hate the word natural, and this is the least objectionable definition that I've come up with that I've, that I've come across is, you know, they're not studied by the natural sciences. So mm-hmm. like they're not observable and testable in those natural science kinds of ways that doesn't make them not objectively true. It doesn't make it so that we can't get knowledge of them. We just don't get knowledge of them in the same not real scientific method that you and I were talking about earlier. Right. Right. So that's that's my view, right? We intuitively cognize moral truths. We can argue about them to some extent. We can have better and worse arguments. We can get towards the truth. Uh, our beliefs about it are fallible, and they're not confirmable in the way that I could confirm the, you know, the laws of physics, the speed of light or something like that. Yeah. So, okay. So it's moral realism because there, because there are objective uh, moral truths uh, and it's, uh, it's non-naturalist because those moral truths aren't the sort of thing that fall into the domain of, of, you know, the sciences uh, and uh, it's intuitionist because uh, we, we access these things uh, by means of moral intuitions which okay. is other means uh, as well, but at least also by intu- intuition is at least one key part of it. So I, I, I have to clear intuition the out. Any way we access these things. Yeah. Okay. One key way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is there, are there ways of accessing them that don't ultimately rest on some sort of at least indirect appeal to intuition? So this is a complicated question. I, I mean, you know, it's sort of like asking, does the like the correctness of an argument can can we get to the correctness of an argument without resting our beliefs about it on an intuition when when we're talking about a, like an argument that's anything more complex than like a very very simple you know like that validity test on a logic argument or something like that um and like i think probably the answer is ultimately no right like can i tell for sure uh, non-intuitively that that Singer's argument about animal rights is correct, for example. Um, no, I think I can only tell in a way that I can tell other kinds of arguments seem better or worse to me, which is, you know, they passed the smell test. I have thought a really long time about the objections. They don't seem sufficient. Um, you know, all of that kind of work. But that's, you know, it's inductive, like, like, inductive process in the sense that it's all it's never going to be perfect or complete or something like that on the flip side 
you know, I have a moral claim, what the Nazis did was wrong, that I'm more confident about than most scientific claims that I, you know, mm-hmm. like, 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 aside from like the very fundamental scientific claims that are very heavily replicated, like, I believe that it's more likely that like, you're never going to uncut the claim what the Nazis did was wrong, in the way that you could probably undercut a bunch of current you know, pop site claims, for example, which won't replicate quite effectively or something like that. So, you know, I think they they are very robustly knowable in that kind of sense, even if they can't be measured in the kind of way that we might want from a science perspective. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and I think, yeah, we, we had a very brief exchange and uh, it, my fault that it was brief uh, about this uh, a, a while back. Cause I, mm-hmm. I, I just, you know, every day, you know, sincerely intended yeah, I, to I know uh, how things work. Yeah. To, to, sure. to write more. Uh, but, um, but I, I think, um, so like one thing that I think definitely did come out by the end of it is that we, we agree about like what the procedure is for for having moral arguments in a certain sense we agree about what we're doing when we have moral arguments right which is mm-hmm. um you know I, I think we do anyway right which is that like what we're what we're doing is we're we're trying to bring our moral intuitions into some kind of reflective equilibrium that that's 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 mm-hmm. what the that's what the activity is uh mm-hmm. but where we disagree or at the very least where you have a a settled view that that causes me discomfort, which is not to say that I have a uh, I have an alternative settled view to trot out to compete with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, is mm-hmm. is this idea that what that moral intuitions are tapping into some some kind of 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 extra mental fact that you know that 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 we're somehow discovering. You know, with mm-hmm. with the uh, mm-hmm. with, with the moral intuitions, you know, which, which is like like there are a couple of ways that you could push back against that, but like one obvious way is is just a uh, that you know I'm, I'm sure you've been asked hundred times before is just an epistemic way, right? Which is like say, okay, well, look, if you say these kinds of truths aren't the kinds of truths that we we study with with sciences, then 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 how is it that our 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 physical brains are somehow mm-hmm. like connecting up to these 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 spookily non-natural truths Mm -hmm. yeah and there i i'm happy to indulge in a partners in crime argument alongside like math and logic and say that like you have your brain is spookily influenced by a bunch of other non-natural forms of knowledge that like the natural sciences can't study but that like clearly causally impact your brain in a variety of ways and alter your behaviors as a result so like i don't i don't worry about the way that a moral truth impacts our intuitions any more than i worry about the way that like uh uh, logical fallacy truths impact our intuitions about good and bad arguments or something like that um so but like, you know, you're certainly right. And and like, I will say, I'm happy to punt on the epistemology stuff. I was joking about this earlier on Twitter that like, um, you know, it's my job to say where the moral truths come down. The, you know, the problem of how to yeah, make yeah, them the go up the epistemologist thing, yeah. problem, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Is the, flip the Werner von Braun claim, you know. This has been a free public preview of a patron exclusive episode of Give Them an Argument. To get the rest of this episode and every other patron exclusive episode, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess.